Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back to RT Share Tea, where respiratory therapists live out loud. With me, your host, Linda Fry the asthma lady yes everyone welcome welcome to anyone new and we are in 2024 and i'm super excited because i have a new guest co-host and she is amazing she is an rt Panua. and those are my respiratory therapists that are out here also being entrepreneurs and i have Anne marie Ware with me here today and so before i let her do her thing i'm going to read her bio and then I'm going to just let her do her stuff. All right, guys. So Anne-Marie Ware is a respiratory therapist of 10 years now. And she went from burnout. She helps those go from burnout to bliss, guiding you through burnout, compassion, fatigue, and moral injury to have vision, clarity, and purpose. She's also the host of Scrubs Unzip Show. Yes, another edutainer very happy about that so super excited to have her on and yes hi there marie hello linda how are you good good welcome to the show thank Once you for again, having me appreciate you and happy new year <laughs> happy new year to you as well yes yes okay so to all my guest co-hosts um you know, we all have our story of what got us into being a respiratory therapist and just being in the medical field. So my question to you is, what made you be a respiratory therapist? And how did your journey as a respiratory therapist inspire your entrepreneurial venture? And what motivated you to become an RTpreneur? Well, my mother, she actually has asthma and she would just tell me stories about how she would get asthma attacks. She's from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh. So she would tell me that like she would have an asthma attack and she would be rushed to the front of the line. And I didn't know anything about our respiratory therapist back then. It was like one of the courses, one of the programs that I could choose from like I do enrolled in 12th grade so instead of going to okay. instead of like having like senioritis I went straight to school straight to college in 12th grade so wow. those uh, respiratory therapists was like on the list of all the others and okay. I just chose to be honest I just chose the one that was the fastest <laughs> Okay. And, okay. And I didn't have to take chemistry at that time. It oh, wasn't required. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I went to I started as a as a pharmacy major. So I I, I chemistry, pre-calc, I, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pivot. Mm -hmm. But go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, so I um I started and I graduated from respiratory school in 2012, and then okay. um you asked about my entrepreneur um endeavors. Like I've always been entrepreneur. Like I sold my paintings in elementary school and in high school, and I also sold baskets. So everyone was like, "Oh yeah, you go, okay. you go buy you something for me." Uh, I got it. <laughs> like you go buy something for me, and um. Once I started becoming a respiratory therapist, I kind of became my own. Um, it started out from being a travel respiratory therapist. Okay. After I got my experience, um, my two years experience, I went and traveled to Alaska. I traveled oh, wow. to Hawaii. So yeah, I went to all of the places where I wanted to go, like Hawaii, Alaska. Um, I walked on a glacier in Alaska and I walked on a volcano in Hawaii. So oh, um, I'm very <laughs> adventurous. Okay. <laughs> the stuff that I have on my bucket list. I have yet to do what I would love to do. Okay. Yeah, so I just um, really, it's just when I learned about once I learned, once I just graduated from respiratory school, I was so optimistic <laughs> and I was so like, oh, I want to learn everything. And um, 
like every day is like a learning opportunity for me. And I just, that transferred, like, so I started traveling before COVID started. So every once COVID started, everyone started traveling, but I was already a traveler. So yeah. And um, I just got, I just got really burnt out. Like, um, I'm fast forwarding to now, um, like okay. to two, three years ago. So, so I the burnout time we're talking about around COVID time. Yeah, yeah, okay. around COVID time. Okay. Yeah. So um I was like really far away on a travel assignment in California and my family lives in Georgia. And it was just when it just started, like no one knew what it was and everyone okay. was scared. And I just had like an anxiety slash, I just had anxiety from it. And it just spiraled into this really big chaotic spiral. And I just went like, like downhill from there. And to get out of that, I had to like go, I had to go back to being a hero for myself because the everyone was saying like oh you guys are heroes and and you're saving lives and so I I really had to go back and say like I if I'm a hero I need to be a hero for myself I need to save myself and that's what I'm trying to do and I'm and I'm my mission is to help others because there's so many other people who are suffering in silence and like not many people talk used to talk about burnout like they talk about it now but they didn't really talk about it um back then but now it's more open but not like I want to make it more I want make I want to make more people aware of burnout in healthcare okay okay so no I I totally, uh, I totally hear you. I can totally relate. And um, I love when you said that you have to be your own superhero people. I remember um, in, you know, respiratory therapist in New York City, like that was a mess during COVID. And, you know, um, uh, people were, of course, like um, when we had change of shifts during COVID, people would you know, shout and and bang outside their windows, pots and pans. And they were cheering us on because they knew like how hard that was to to have to deal with what we dealt with in the hospital. But like you were saying, it's it's to even motivate yourself to leave your house, leave your family Mm -hmm. and you yourself, you scared and having to go day in day. I remember all the bells the alarms going off during COVID. And I myself still think I have PTSD from all the bell ringing from that time. And um, so I understand. Um, and you really, what, who, I mean, you, you had to go to work. I mean, what are you, who were you going to talk to about the burnout? It was just like, okay, we have to deal with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I totally, I love what you said and, um, being able to help other people around that is, um, I love it because we still, even though people are talking about burnout, um, I still feel like there are folks out here that still don't know how to deal with that, mm-hmm. you know, in um in their own circumstances. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. That's it. Yeah, I was gonna, about to say, like, um, through my research and through all of the things that I've been through, I developed a guide um, and a couple other things that I developed to help. So we'll talk about that. Okay. 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 Love it. So, okay. So as somebody deeply involved in healthcare, how do you balance the demands of the profession with the challenges and rewards of being an entrepreneur. So, you know, you're doing your your respiratory thing, you know, you doing that, going to work and everything else. So how do you balance out now the 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 requirements for entrepreneurship, like just to move things forward? 
Well, I have people to support me. I actually hired an assistant and I also have my mother. She, we, uh, we live together, so she cooks the meals. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Always helping so... out. See, hooking you up. Let me tell you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes definitely yes and she like packs my lunches and stuff so that I can so I can eat and um uh, it's just really having the support and having patience with myself because I just started a new job Okay. And um, because I was traveling and doing internal agency, but this okay. job is more of a full-time position. Okay. All right, Anne-Marie. So yes, in, so in your, in your dual roles, what strategies do you use to stay informed about advancements in both respiratory therapy and entrepreneurship? And I know you started to talk about um, your research. And, you know, what you've already found. So talk more a little bit about that. Well, in, as far as respiratory therapy, um, our, uh, my new job, we have a lot of continuing education courses. And um, they talk about having resilience as being a, mm -hmm. a healthcare worker and um, just I just and I also through my research I found out there's seven types of self care, so it's more than just a bubble bath. Like there's financial self care and okay. there's <laughs> self care. There's so many different types of self care, and it's just okay. you you think of I self care. As, bath, that's not <laughs> like you, yeah, you think of it as like, oh, I'm gonna get a massage today. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll lift some weight. Wash my hair for extra yeah. money. <laughs> Yeah. And sometimes self care can just be taking 30 seconds to have gratitude, like mm -hmm. just being, just realizing like all the things that you have right now in the moment and just saying, oh, I'm grateful for this right now. I'm grateful that I can breathe, that I can actually walk out of the hospital. Like some people don't want, get a chance to walk out of the hospital because of the ailments or the issues that they have. And I just, realizing like just the little things like putting one step in front of the other makes a big difference when you're consistent mm -hmm. I love it okay okay so you definitely so you've definitely done the research prior to um um just being out there and saying I want to help folks so you saw what was available <laughs> out there already and you found your aha moment. And um, because even, even for myself, um, yeah, I you think the luxuries of just going to get your hair done is, you know, like, oh, okay, I'm just I'm just going to go get my hair done. But that's not um we think we think it's a it's it's a luxury to 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 have to to get those things done but it's actually a necessity to mm -hmm. take care of yourself, like self-care. And then, like you said, all the subcategories that are within self-care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did not know. Okay. Love it. Um, and so, okay. As an entrepreneur, what advice do you have for others looking to combine their healthcare expertise with entrepreneurship? So I would, my advice would be to do your research, but don't let that stop you when you have analysis paralysis, oh, yes. where you- <laughs> All the research. <laughs> where you've done all this research, but you're not taking any action. And I think action is the most important part of being an entrepreneur. It's yeah. doing do the it. little task. <laughs> What would you say? I said, do it. Let's like, actually do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Go out and actually do it. I, yeah. 
Yeah, that is like the most important and like having being accountable to people like I have people on my team that I'm accountable to and that have really helps a lot because sometimes you're in your own world and you're just going mm -hmm. off, fluttering off and just like oh. <laughs> Of <laughs> like all the way all yeah. the time Not a way and, going on around you yeah and it's just sometimes it is hard to balance going to work and having a business at the same time and my my true vision is to like make my side gig be my main gig yes, child. And, <laughs> and I'm working towards that <laughs> And while I'm working towards that, I just have all of my goals that I need to meet, like my quarterly goals and mm -hmm. just making sure I, like they say, like, how do you eat an elephant? Like one bite at a time. So I want to make sure that I have it, that I actually take the action steps to be successful. Oh, I love that. Yes, I I totally agree. Um, it's all about action. It's just, you know, you talk the talk, you walk the walk. Like, you know, if you, if you know, I, I think that's the best thing because that's really how you're going to know if something is for you, if it works, um, if you shine, uh, because all the research is all good. I'm all about preparation and um doing your due diligence and all that but if it takes you 15 years <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to gather all, all that research and you the the moment has passed <laughs> I mean I don't want to say the moment has passed but it's just like you said you just don't want that to keep you in the same place you know like thinking like because you'll never know everything you know, mm -hmm. all that information is, is that's out there is, is can be overwhelming. Definitely. Um, okay. Anne Marie, I love it. Finally, what messes or insights do you want to leave our listeners with, especially those considering, uh, similar plans and blending healthcare expertise with entrepreneurship? So what, what would you, and you, you gave a little bit in the last question, but you know, what's your final insights? So, um, well, with the place that I was in, I was very desperate and very, um, very unstable. <laughs> so I have these three <laughs> keys. Um, if you're coming from a place of burnout and you're like, I don't know which way is up. So the first part is restabilize. So when you restabilize, like after a war, like I feel like um, what we experience with COVID and all the other things, it is, could be like us, it could be express as like that was like a war like we had to war daily and we had to be the hero so I want to um, put forth that stabilizing yourself taking inventory of what you have at the moment like when the dust settles after a battle like you have to make sure you have shelter you have to make sure you have the basic necessities before you go out and do it an entrepreneurship endeavor and the second thing is regroup mm -hmm. and when you regroup you take all the resources that you have and you build a stable foundation so that the next time the next battle that comes around like you're not knocked off you're you're stable you're stable when you're in this stable environment and you've regrouped, you've taken all of the necessary training that you need so to make sure that you're okay on the inside. Because some there are some people who are building like a facade, like what they post on social media is not who they are in real life. And I want to make sure that by working with me, um, that you are whole 
a whole person yeah. and it's not like you're hiding from who you truly want to be and then the last thing is refocus so once you've gotten all of the tools that you need you refocus and set goals on where do you want to be in five years 10 years 20 years like what what actions do you need to take now to move you forward into being an entrepreneur? Or there's some people who really love their jobs and they love what they do. You can actually um, schedule in time to volunteer. Like there are people who volunteer and they yes. um, they fill, they get their cup filled that way. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> not everyone has to be an entrepreneur. It's but not for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the fact that you said that. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, it's not like it like it's not as easy as people put out to be. And um like it's really I would say like you have to have that inner drive like you like you can't call it motivation it has to be discipline like I'm talking to myself like I have to be disciplined <laughs> enough <laughs> to get to where I want to be and um it's just having discipline and having accountability but at the end of the day no one can tell you what to do because we're adults like um we gave up that right when we became 18. We're adults <laughs> now, so you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> so when you become an adult, you actually, you kind of have to yield that decision-making and say, choose a person in your life or hire a person to say, hey, can you make me accountable? Can you make can you help me stay focused? Because there are some times when I'm not focused, when I'm just like, just this week, like I just stayed in my bed, like all week. I only got out of my bed to do this. <laughs> like I just, like the bare, like I sometimes I do the bare necessity and I believe that's okay because I still yeah. am learning how to do my new job and I want to make sure I do that job well before I start adding all of these extra things to my yes. task list and um, I need to focus my brain power on what I'm doing right now and that's this new job and I want to make sure I do a great job for those patients and and that is okay because you only have 24 hours in a day and being patient with yourself and just being just being very uh patient with yourself and just having that accountability can help you go far and the last thing I would add is having vision like being able to visualize where you want to be in 2024 and beyond will definitely help you move that pe that pendulum forward yes Anne-Marie mm. preach <laughs> preach <laughs> I I am definitely um myself too. I have struggled in the as a I do con consider myself a high achiever. Um I struggle in the grace department. I'm very mean to myself back back in the day. Very mean to myself. So if I had a goal and I didn't hit it, I was just not nice to to me. And um, I had to learn and it was adding on to my own unhappy. You know, when something, when you're unhappy, you have no reason why you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. That's what was starting to happen to me. And then I realized it was because I was talking to myself crazy, like not being nice. And so, but I, I thank you for talking about those things. And so, yes, Anne-Marie, so we're hitting that time. Um, listen, this is your time to plug plug away where can people <laughs> find you what do you have going on now um to, you you know um a scrubs on zipped uh podcast let let us know where where can we find it how do we hit you up okay so i have a 
I also have a podcast called Scripts Unzipped, and I unveil healthcare's hidden passions, mm -hmm. and I interview other healthcare workers mm -hmm. who have side passions and who want a space to just um, really, un where I'm unzipping the mouths of healthcare, like just mm -hmm. talking about all the different things that we can do better in healthcare and how we can improve. And um, I also have a free guide available on my website that speaks about um, the different types of self-care and you can go on annemarieware.com nice. and okay that will be available for free download. Um, we just have to um, just go, there's Anne Marie, A-N-N-M-A-R-I-E. Okay, I'll add it to the- W-A-R-E. I'll add it to the- Okay, description. okay. okay. Yeah, that so is... my first name and last name, where annemarieware.com. Dot com, nice. Okay, so I- Thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for being here with us and sharing your perspectives on your entrepreneur journey, entrepreneurship journey, and being an entrepreneur and talking about the balances and, and um, just, just how to create and be you in different spaces. So I respect that. When I saw everything that you were doing, I really admired that. And it's just good to see another another sister <laughs> in the healthcare <laughs> field, especially as a respiratory therapist doing it and um, speaking out loud. Love it. And um, if you ever need me on the unzipped, uh, Scrubs Unzipped. Yeah, definitely. You know where to find me. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll we'll chop it up after. So let me, let me uh, close out. So yeah, guys. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for being here with us. Thank you, Anne-Marie, for sharing your perspectives. Um, once again, guys, we, as you know, we are here on most podcast platforms on Wednesdays, and we are also on YouTube on Thursdays. So much more to come in 2024. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, remember to invest in yourself and to only compete with yesterday's version of you. I'll see you next time. Bye.